Hello YouTube, Mr. Report Newsletter and Tutor Chat subscribers. This is Terrell from Terrell03.com. Today is February 4th, 2020. This is the Mr. Report um, Newsletter number 5 for 2020. There's also 5 for 2019. And they're all in the the 2020 Dropbox folder for subscribers. This weekly newsletter program is all about helping people see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight using his three witnesses of spirit, water, and blood, testifying in the Holy Scriptures from Genesis 1 through Revelation. And I want to read to you um, real quickly. This email just came in from Naji brand new just subscribed and um, already donated and Naji sees it Naji writes I hope I'm pronouncing your name properly also um, brother Terrell I have watched all the mystery reports several times and those on the black star reports related to biblical teachings plus printed out the material via the Dropbox folder I wanted to tell you what a blessing to have found your ministry on the three witnesses. It is truly hidden in plain sight. That's what I'm telling you. Whenever you see it, it makes me smile. And I greatly appreciate how she said uh, she followed the wisdom reading the 13 epistles in your book. And that not done yet. Well, you've been busy. There's a lot. There's a ton of information. And um, you're being given a breadcrumb trail. And um, for, uh, to follow, so you have, and you also have these ten radio shows. So John is is um, this? These are from 2012. That was uh, 2012. It, the book was written in 2005, published in 2017. So this is kind of in the middle. So you can have a comparison to what I'm sharing with you today. And what was being shared back in 2012, right here, and you're going to see, it's going to be identical, uh, pretty much. Because uh, most of this, 99.9 .9 of this, or what you're seeing in my book and things, was settled. When I was young and growing in these things, my interpretations were changing. Because I was changing, I was growing, seeing things differently. God raised me up, showed me, and then all of a sudden, things were, when you, once you see it, once you have the truth, it stays the same. That's the beauty of it. And then you're building precept upon precept. So, um, the um, featured article for this week was sent in by Brian, the question. And he wants to understand more about solving the Acts 2.20 dilemma. Very interesting. Um, what I'm going to be sharing right here. Before we do that, let's have a quick coronavirus update. This is part of the signs of the time. This is part. This is part of the mystery report. We're anticipating being taken. Revolution, um, First Thessalonians 4, start at 13. First Corinthians chapter 15, start at 51. That's about to happen. That final trump is about to happen. The black star is almost here. Whether it's on this cycle, or the next cycle, we're going to see. But this was shared by Marv right here. And this is the website. Just look at what you're seeing here. It's posted in the in the newsletter. This is what this is where I'm gonna be at, keeping up the tabs. More than one website. Obviously, you need a lot of them to keep up with it, but this is the best one that I've seen yet, and Marv sent it in. And I'm going to be sharing this information in both newsletters. So you just hit the refresh button, save the link, and you're seeing how this is shaking out. The thing to realize, because you're looking at, you cannot draw conclusions based upon the information you have today. You cannot draw conclusions yet. Don't even try to draw conclusions. There's information out there. There's misinformation. We're in, the, and you're looking at the novel virus. So people are saying, coronavirus, coronavirus like that's supposed to mean something that's this is the 2019 in cov however you want to identify it but this is still the novel virus that we're talking about here it's when this thing mutates the game changes 
but we're going to keep our eye on this it's already more cases than SARS plenty of evidence that it's a biological weapon this is where it began it's not that I don't believe it just got out in out of a lab in China I believe it was released there so far but if you're following my reports there's there's too many unknowns we do not have enough information to draw definitive conclusions about any of this yet what we do know is these numbers are going to keep going up okay you're likely going to see more craziness coming out of what's happening in China because they're trying to hide it which means these numbers are wrong so just hang in there there is not enough information for us to draw conclusions about what's happening but that th this has me really really spooked just let you know then also this is the first missed report on, on the new system part of one of the reasons I'm running behind my apologies for that is trying to do so much probably making a mistake here and there the um, with what's going on with the medical emergency here at the house tearing out all the carpet and everything trying to get the floors done and do the mystery report and do the black star report and then that my the, my system was like my old system the, the sound the hard drive was getting louder and louder you know what happens whenever you get to hear that hum that helm of death and then all of a sudden boom you lose everything couldn't take that chance so I've been threatening to get a new system finally I think this is the first one on the new system and so far so good so far everything's uh, this system works way faster than the other one has more RAM so a lot to cover just kick back and relax this is going to be more than an hour so because it's not just this in the uh, the uh, defending arguments and then the debates it's really what this newsletter is about more than the stories that I'm going to, that that I'm being shared with you there's a little there's, so there's a little bit of shortage on that and I did my best this morning it's one of the reasons I'm running late to run to run to uh, christianforms.com and see if they're one of the problem other problems I was having is people weren't answering they weren't trying to challenge me on my the substance of my opening post usually I can go there and find five or six people that are you know just they don't see it they're attacking me and all this stuff didn't happen that way this week got a little bit of it here just recently so anyway kick back right now we're going to look at solving the Acts 220 dilemma which I would imagine most people don't even know what that means so Brian's been working with me now what for, since 2013 and he loves debating God's Word like I do so whenever he hits a bump in the road then I'm his tutor like I'm your tutor if you're a uh, subscriber and um, so in Acts 2:20, let's just start off let's just read what Brian wrote he wrote on the 31st then he wrote yeah, New American Standard Bible the Sun will be turned to dark into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and glorious day of the Lord or as other translation the great and terrible day of the Lord okay so then he, he's going to give me the Young's translation the Sun shall be turned into darkness the moon and the uh, and the moon to blood before the coming of the day of the Lord the great and illustrious it's the great and terrible that's what it is I think you know where I'm going with this but I have to ask how do these end of the age events occur before the coming of the thousand years day of the Lord how do they come before it and so I begin writing right here yes I see the seeming problem that is really not a problem at all and uh, you found another series of Bible verses that can be interpreted in multiple ways so that's the way God hides his wisdom it sounds tricky but when you see it enough times you're going to see exactly what I mean scripture is written in using terms the Greek and the Hebrew so that the meaning can be interpreted the true meaning what you're getting out of that verse to one person says one thing to the next person says something different the sons of God God's sons he leads you in that direction by the Holy Spirit that's in your body those with the unholy spirit in their body they read it and see something totally different that's the key God's wisdom is, is hidden right in front of your eyes it's right in plain sight 
once you see the three witnesses, well, that's one of the big keys to being able. So I see the seeming problem. There's really not a problem at all. You have found, okay, multiple ways. Using simple terms, there is a day of the Lord that the Paul says will come. That is tied directly to the times and epochs. So the, uh, the issue that Brian's having right here is these are the same signs that you'll see in Matthew 24, start at 29. And they're being restated here in Acts 2, verse 20. Okay, and so these signs that he's talking about, how does it happen before the great and terrible day of the Lord? There's, there's, more, there's more answers than one to this because they are going to happen before. The black star starts the day of the Lord and it ends the day of the Lord. Difference is, Earth is going to be in the May position whenever we have this geological pole shift, whenever the destruction comes from 1 Thessalonians 5. Sud destruction comes suddenly, like a birth pangs upon a woman with child. That's not the same destruction that's being talked about here. Paul sees how the day of the Lord begins. The prophets, Christ, everybody else sees how the day of the Lord ends. Black star comes both times. The day of the Lord is sandwiched in between. That's the day of the Lord that already started with John the Baptist that's now held in abeyance. So it's put on the back burner. We get raptured. God puts it back on the front burner. Okay. There's a difference between the day of the Lord. Well, it's before I jump to the punchline. Let's read that. Let's just go through and read the reply. Because there's, there are nuggets in here for those that want the meat. I see the seeming problem. There's really no problem. Okay, the, the term day of the Lord, this is the one that Paul talks about. Now, this phrase right here, time and epochs, this phrase is only used three times in the whole Bible. And so let's go to this first use, 1 Thessalonians 5, that was just talking about. If I kept quoting it, you see the destruction that comes. Now, as to the time and epochs, brethren, you have no need of anything to be written to you for you yourselves know full well that the day of the Lord will come just like a thief in the night the day of the Lord is going to start that way it's going to begin take this phrase time and epochs back to Acts 1 7 that's another place where the phrase is used where Christ connects the time and epochs to the restoration of the kingdom of Israel where the day of the Lord is as a thousand years that's 2 Peter. Okay, well, it's gonna, we're going to start out right here. Okay, so when they had come together, they were asking him, they were asking Christ, saying, this is our risen Lord, after he was raised from the dead. Okay, saying, Lord, is it this time you are restoring the kingdom to Israel? And Christ said to them, it's not if you know the time or epochs which the Father has fixed by his own authority. Okay. So, the son doesn't know, does he? We've answered that question before, if you remember. So this led to Brian's next question. It's not for them to, so if you put two and two together right here, the time and epochs, see this time and epochs, see this time and epochs out here? The time and epochs, brethren, you have no need of anything to be written to you. The reason Paul said that is because he sat down with the Thessalonians, like I'm sitting down with you right now, and he explained them. He explained to them the things of Matthew 24. He explained to them how the age is going to end. That's what he is reciting again in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 1 through 6. Paul is telling them things that he already told them about the prophecy part. Okay? He told them about how the people that obey the gospel of the kingdom are going to be martyred. He told him about how, how when the gospel of the kingdom goes to the whole world, the end will come. He told him about the great tribulation. He told him, well, before even that, he told him how the uh, man of sin, what do you want to call him, the beast? Now he's going to set up his abomination, abomination of desolation, Daniel 9. Start at uh, 24, right? The abomination is going to be set up, and then Christ says to head for the mountains. Matthew 24, verse 16. Okay? That's how the day of the Lord ends. 
This is how the day of the Lord, Paul's describing how the day of the Lord begins. But the important part to gather from this is that you connect exactly what Christ is saying here. The times and epochs here, it's not for you to know about the time and epochs. That's what he's telling Peter, John, and James. They don't need to know what's happening during the day of the Lord. That's what Paul's saying up here. As to the time and epochs, brethren, you have no need to anything written to you. For you know full well the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. So if you're making the connection between the time and the epochs and the day of the Lord, down here you make the restoration of the kingdom, and you tie that to the time and epochs, and then you got the answer. What Paul is talking about is whenever Elijah comes to restore all things, and including the, te the temple and the kingdom to Israel, that's the same kingdom, and, and that's the temple that is going to be defiled by the Antichrist at the end of the age. Okay. So, restoring the kingdom to Israel during these time and epochs will obviously require a good amount of time. It's going to take a long time. Paul describes how the day of the Lord comes, and the prophets describe events taking place during the day of the Lord, like Ezekiel 34 through 36. 34 start at 22. David is installed as prince. And if you read all three chapters, just start at the beginning of 34 and read to the end of 36, you're going to see the use of the, a phrase that includes abomination a dozen times, 12 times that number of judgment. And you see, by the end, Daniel 9 is fulfilled and the Messiah, the Prince, is going to be cut off. The end of the age. That's the end of the age thing. We're still in the period now whenever the day of the Lord is about to start. What, what Brian wants to understand is how this day of the Lord, how can these end of the age events occur before the coming of the thousand of the uh, thousand year day of the Lord? And see, he's describing the great and terrible day of the Lord. The final answer is going to come in a reading of 2 Peter chapter 3. But this is all setting up the stage. Okay, here's Daniel 9, 24. Jesus Christ and Daniel describe the end of the age events. Matthew 24, 15. This is where the Antichrist sets up his abomination of desolation from Daniel 9. Leading to the great tribulation. Um, Matthew 24, 21. That's the same as Revelation chapter 7, start at 14. So, so on and so forth. We now know that the same black star that caused Noah's flood and the earth changes in the days of Moses and Joshua is coming again to start the day of the Lord with the destruction that comes suddenly like the birth pangs, earth changes, upon a woman, earth, with child, the body of Christ. The body of Christ is caught up to meet the Lord in the air just prior to the coming destruction from 1 Thessalonians 5. God tills and purifies the land with fire and water to start the day of the Lord. Followed by Elijah, who's another skin for our father Adam. Restoring all things during the day of the Lord. This includes the fulfillment of all the words of the prophets. <clears throat> I'm going to go back to Acts 3. Therefore repent and return. So that your sins may be wiped away in order that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord that he may send Jesus, the Christ, appointed for you. These are my little notes that are, that are within the verse. Whom God must receive, and if you read the little Greek there, who, whom heaven must hold by the hand is the way that the Greek reads here who heaven must receive until the period of the restoration of all things. That takes us right back to Matthew 17, where Christ says, Elijah must come first. About which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from ancient time. Imagine how much it takes, how much time it takes. Heaven must hold Christ by the hand until the restoration of all things. Whenever Christ, whenever the Holy Spirit says all things, all things that's a bunch it's not just what you can do in one day it's the restoration of all things we're talking about that's what's going to start under elijah for the next 3600 years it's going to continue for the ages to the ages of the ages but it's going to start during the day of the lord during this evil age 
Satan and his minions are going to be chained. We're going to be sitting on those unoccupied seats. Remember, God chains them. That empties heaven, the heavenly seats. We're going to be pushing the levers of heaven on earth. Everything is restored as it is in heaven. Okay. My apologies for the racket outside. Okay, so Moses said, the Lord God, who is Christ. Christ is the Lord God, starting his seventh day consecration work on Genesis in Genesis 2, 4. The Almighty God is the one who created the heaven and the earth in Genesis 1, 1. It was here a long time. The Big Bang is Genesis 1, 2, when everything was made formless and void. Darkness fell upon, upon the face of the deep. That's when God reconstituted what we have now in this broken creation from the previously from the previous creation that was perfect there were no such thing as angels then there were no such thing as men no such thing as women we we're all immortal souls but whenever the earth which was a singularity was shattered was broken then the heavens became the waters above the earth became the waters below and the expanse in the middle is heaven three witnesses same way the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are taken from the Word. Heavens, heaven, and earth are taken from the earth. I've shown you guys that many, 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 many times. Okay. So, the Lord will raise up from among you a prophet like me, who is going to be Elijah. To him. Now, this is misinterpreted by almost every translator. This H is big here. They think it's Christ that's coming. But no, Elijah must come first. That's what Christ says, Matthew 17, started 10. People get, well, led down the wrong path by thinking that Christ says that he already came, that many ain't coming again. That's not what it means. He's coming again, just like he came in, Elijah came in as John the Baptist, he's coming again as somebody else. When we're raptured, He's going to be standing on the Jordan River. He's going to get the Holy Spirit. And he's going to start preaching the gospel of the kingdom. The Lord God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. To him you shall give heed to everything he says to you. And it shall be that every soul that does not heed that prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. Now that is a powerful prophet. That's like prophet Elijah when the king sent after him and he killed Elijah just didn't want to go to see the king that day, at that moment. So what does he do? They came and said, they sent soldiers to go get Elijah. Elijah ain't going. Elijah starts wiping out the soldiers, calling down the fire of the Lord 50 at a time. And it took until Elijah destroyed 150 of them, three groups of 50, before the commander finally said, okay, I'm going to tell the king that you'll be here whenever you get darn good and ready. That's how you deal with this guy. He's the most powerful character in the Bible. This guy right here, well, nobody's more powerful than God. You know what I mean. And nobody walking around the earth. Of everybody that's walking around the earth. That's not what Christ came for. Christ said that his kingdom is not of this realm. It's not, it's not of this world. It's not even of this realm. You go there, most powerful thing, it's going to be Christ. Here, it's going to be the man that he made to be the king of this universe. And that's what you're seeing in this power of Elijah. He's prophet, priest, and king, just like Christ is prophet, priest, and king of heaven. Here he is, right here. As the prophet, Elijah, and David the king, and Abraham our father, the father of Gentiles, and that's how it, why his name was changed, Abraham, from Abram. Father of fathers. He's the father of us all. He's the same guy back in Genesis. Adam. I know it's difficult. Sarah, Eve. David, Adam. Bathsheba, Eve. The two olive trees that keep coming back to testify to their children. Sometimes to their obedient children. And sometimes to their disobedient children. Like they do as the, three witness, as the two witnesses in Revelation 11. Same two witnesses. The same Elijah that's going to come and restore all things right here. The same, he's, he's the same guy as David that's going to sit on the throne. He's going to be cut off and he's going to come back again. As one of the two witnesses is going to be Adam and Eve. They're going to be just like Elijah and Moses. 
They have the same exact powers of Elijah and Moses because those powers are not the powers of Elijah and Moses. They're the powers of Adam and Eve, the original cultivators of the land. Now think that through, and you'll start seeing some more of those uh, little golden nuggets that help the Bible to make perfect sense according to the three witnesses. Okay, so all the words of his holy prophets from ancient time will be fulfilled during the upcoming day of the Lord, where Paul explains how things begin and Peter describes how things end. So very important. That's why he was chosen for, we're right here at the critical time. Black Star can come while I'm talking. Not kidding. Now we could be taken, because we're going to be taken before the Black Star gets here, right? So it could happen. It's likely going to be closer to the event, but I'm just saying. This is what Peter writes, for when we maintain, for when they maintain this, it escapes their notice that by the word of God, by the word of God, or through the word of God, the word of John 1, 1, John 1, 2, is the same exact thing as heaven of Genesis 1, 1. By the word of God, the heavens, this is the waters that were above the firmament, Genesis 1. 1 6 through 8. The heavens existed long ago, and the earth, that's the waters below the firmament. So you have a visible universe, seen earth, invisible universe, unseen heavens where the angels are. Earth, abode of men, heavens, abode of angels. Heaven, that's where the singularity hosts go, the living souls, when they're man half. And their angel half are put back together again. That's a concept that you may have never heard of it before. But it's true. And it's taught by the three witnesses. Once you see the patterns in the scriptures, it begins explaining all these things. The new nature, the new man, it's inside of you. It's like this is the food. The scriptures, particularly the Pauline epistles, that's the food that the new man eats. It starts off as a little baby in the manger and you're, when you're first saved. But then it grows up. The more you feed it, the stronger it gets. You start off crawling, you fall down, you bust your knees a few times when you're starting off, and then you learn to walk, fat, walk fast, and then you learn to run. And it's a really great thing. It's, it, I love hearing the an, anticipation, the expectation, the hope, the excitement in someone's voice whenever they start seeing these things because I'm not kidding you I remember going through it and it was so exciting I just could hardly stand it when I start God was showing me these things but there was nobody for me to go to to ask the questions that could see these things like this that's where you guys have a big advantage you really do this is really great stuff once you can see it okay when they maintain this it existed long ago by water, through which, through which the world at that time was destroyed, being flooded with water. Black star in the days of Noah. But by his word, the present heaven and earth are being reserved for fire, kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. Doesn't that sound like Revelation 20? Doesn't that sound exactly like Revelation? Well, that's what it is. That's what, exactly what it's talking about. That's the, judge, the final judgment. That's the second resurrection. There's a first resurrection that starts the day of the Lord. That's us. That's Peter, John, and James. That's everybody that obeyed the gospel of the kingdom. We are going to be in the Lamb, members of his body, incarnate. In the Lamb. We're going to be the members of the Lamb's body. Peter, John, and James are going to be on the sea of glass in front of the Lamb. They're the kingdom of priests making intercession for everybody in heaven okay so this is where Peter describes the day the great and terrible day of the Lord also called the day of God but Peter and the Holy Spirit switches gears to say what we're doing what I'm doing is is bringing you through second Peter 3 and giving you the correct interpretation for it that's going to take the blinders off. But do not let this one fact escape your notice, brethren, that with the Lord one day, which is the day of the Lord, is like a thousand years. 
and a thousand years like one day because it is to the Lord because it is the the day of the Lord that's the phrase the day of the Lord is as a thousand years but this phrase is only used in two books of the Bible Revelation and Second Peter that's it and it is a euphemism it's a saying you ever get to start working on something and then you can start getting frustrated because it's taking so long it's so tedious that you're going man this is gonna take a thousand years or you say to somebody man that look at that it's gonna take you a thousand that's what the Bible is saying and what it means is so long as it takes it's not telling you exactly 1,000 years with exactly that many days. That's not what it's saying. And if you go back to what I just quoted to you back in Acts 3, it's until all the prophecies coming from the mouth of the prophets of old is fulfilled. All of them. Restoration of all things, you see. Okay. So, the Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness. Uh, slowness so people that are living through the day of the Lord coming up they're gonna read the four Gospels and they're gonna skip the Pauline epistles they may as well skip them that's not written to them it's written to you God put you first as blood witnesses and then he's gonna take us away so the people that whenever Elijah comes and he teaches everybody the gospel of the kingdom he preaches it to them he, he's going to preach in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the second baptism. And then he's going to lay hands on them and give them the Holy Spirit, the third baptism. That's going to make them disciples of, guess what? The Way. Capital T-H-E, capital W-A-Y. The Way through the veils of the tabernacle. Right? Through the two veils. And then they're going to have the power of the Holy Spirit. Elijah's got the power to raise the dead. He's going to give these disciples the power to raise the dead. And he's going to give them, he's going to command them. And they're going to go, and there are going to be more people coming back with them than were sent. Because they have the power to read, start at Ezekiel 30, um, I, I just said 34 through 36, all that desolation, will start at 37. Even though that is the new earth, new heaven and new earth, Elijah has the power to open those graves the same exact way in this evil age when the devil is chained. So people say, well, the black star is coming. He's going to destroy everything. doesn't matter if everything's destroyed because Elijah has the power to change everything. He has the power to raise the dead. Through him, God has the power to raise all the dead. If that's what God wants to do according to his plan. Okay. So notice what, pe what Peter's writing here to these people living through the coming day of the Lord. He says the Lord is not slow about his promise because they're going to wait 3,600 years before this is going to be fulfilled what's about to be written. During the day of the Lord because they're already going to be in the day of the Lord. We don't know what that means. We, we're still waiting for that to begin. And most of those that are blinded by denominationalism right now think we're coming to the end of the age. They don't even see the day of the Lord as a 3,600-year period between the Black Star comings. They think that the day of the Lord is only one day, even though it says right there, Peter says, don't let this one fact escape your notice, but that's exactly what they do. The Lord is not slow. Well, if it was a one-day thing, of course it wouldn't be slow. It would be over in a day, but it's not. The great and terrible day of the Lord, which is characterized, quote-unquote, as the day of God, is different. Totally different thing. That is an event. That happens after the final judgment. Between the final judgment of Revelation, chapter 20, verse 14 and 15. 14, you have Lake of Fire. You have the, the uh, Hades from inside the earth. Don't need Hades anymore. And death thrown into the Lake of Fire. Don't need them anymore. But you still have the lake of fire. As it's mentioned in Revelation 21.8. All liars are going in there. All the shifts. That's right. The Nadlers. And all that stuff. They're already going to be in there by that time. But in, in those days that are coming. You don't get to walk around on the earth. Telling those lies like they're doing. And get away with it. 
they're gonna they're gonna do what they do and then all of a sudden they're gonna be in the lake of fire in the coming period but anyway let's get on here with Peter the Lord is not slow about his promise as some count slowness but is patient towards you these are people that are going to obey the gospel of the kingdom that's what's going through the whole world there is no gospel of the grace of God for them that's for us it's important that you realize that some people think the only gospel is our gospel for today the word of the cross that the gospel of the kingdom is not even a gospel but it is they are saved through by water baptism John's baptism they receive the baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus they go into the holy place and then into the Holy of Holies when they get that laying of the hands they get the Holy Spirit that's behind the second veil they're gonna be walking around full of the Holy Spirit able to raise from people from the dead they have no need to be taught anything about kingdom doctrine but they're not going to know anything about the gospel of the grace of God Peter didn't know it either that's why Paul had to rebuke him in Galatians 2 started 11 he was not straightforward about the truth of the gospel Peter didn't even know about it gospel of the Gentiles gospel of the uncircumcised he thought that Paul's Gentiles were being added to his kingdom church that's why they were telling they had to be bad the circumcised that's what Galatians is all about circumcision the reason that they bought Titus you know why you ever wonder why Paul Barnabas and Titus went not Timothy why Titus because Titus was a giant he was a big giant man when he walked in the room he's guy like ducking to get in the door he was a Gentile and he was uncircumcised and Paul wanted to bring Titus because Paul was accustomed to being buried under a pile of rocks he wasn't like a big strong guy and Barnabas apparently he was kind of the same way but Titus he was like a like Ulysses or he was like some big strong guy so he knew once he made the case and they were going to start bringing him that circumcision stuff they weren't going to try to force Titus to be in circumcised he was like bigger big as you know two or three men so anyway um, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief so it's coming at the end of the age so it's going the day of the Lord's going to end with the day of God coming like a thief similar to the way that the day of the Lord begins Paul says the same thing that it comes like a thief in the night nobody knows the Old Testament prophets were not allowed to see how the day of the Lord started they only see how it ends but this seems to be a contradiction because how can it come as a thief if Daniel knows the number of days Daniel's going to count a timeline backwards tell you how many weeks groups of seven years is he knows the one week of the uh, of the covenant that's broken he knows everything he knows that was this anyway when the kings when the king when the Messiah the prince is cut off he knows when it happens it was at the 62nd week if my memory is serving so if Daniel knows and then at the end of Daniel he says go on to the end of the age because he's given you the, the, the timeline all the way to the end of the age so how can it come as a thief in the night if the if Daniel sees it all the thing is that Daniel's not writing about the day of God he's writing about the day of the Lord they're two different things day of the Lord you can see that it has weeks it has time it has Messiah the Prince the rebuilding of the temple and the prince is even making sin offerings and then the, what people think is well why is he doing that they're saved by the blood of Christ no they're not they have to Israel has to apply that blood they apply the blood the way it was applied to the doorpost it's applied they go to the priest they send they bring the bull if it's a big sin they bring a bull a little sin they bring the turtle doves but the animal gets killed and then they got to do something with the blood they sprinkle it here they got to do this it there that's the law they are under mosaic law until when until heaven and earth passes away Matthew 5 start at 17 and that's what James is writing James 2 10 keep the whole law but you stumble in one point then you're guilty of breaking the whole law characterizing there those are commands written to kingdom disciples living from the time the day of the Lord starts until they are martyred Matthew 24 9 they will kill you 
Every single one, every single person that obeys the gospel of the kingdom will be killed by the devil, the beast, and the false prophet whenever they are allowed to rise up during their short time at the end of the age. All of that requires time during the day of the Lord. But what Peter's writing about here, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief. What he means here, see how it's written to be interpreted two different ways? That's what has Brian confused and many confused. Okay, This day of the Lord is actually going to be the day of God. The day of the Lord will come like a thief in which the heavens will pass away and a roar, uh, with a roar, and elements will be destroyed with intense heat. The earth and its works will be burned up. If you go into Revelation, you'll see there's no longer any place for them. Read Revelation 21.1. Gone. Earth. Now there's a new heaven and a new earth that begins the new age. We're living in the same evil age now, Galatians 1.4, that started in Genesis 1.2, whenever the darkness fell. That darkness from Genesis 1.2 is the same darkness from Ephesians 6.12, the evil powers and forces of this darkness. That's the, the defining feature of this age that is not going to change. We sit in those heavenly seats during the day of the Lord. It's still in the evil age. It's going to be like a dungeon compared to our heavenly seats in New Jerusalem, in the new heaven, new earth. All right, David's throne in the new earth, way better than his throne in this evil age. So this is like a uh, getting ready for the new heaven and new earth thing in the upcoming day of the Lord. We're living right now in the very last days of the mystery time that the prophets were never allowed to see. We are sandwiched inside of the day of the Lord because Israel was put on the back burner. Okay. Peter shows time passing through the day of the Lord. That's why he's saying be patient. It's coming. It's just not here yet. That we now understand to be the period between the coming of the Black Star Earth Crossing event in May. Can't tell what year yet. No matter how much of this information you get together, they're missing coefficients in the equations. We know the month. We, not, we do not know the year. We don't know how much more, how much more the black star is going to slow down. Okay? Because of its magnetic repulsion relationship with the sun. Okay? And the next black star Earth crossing event in November, 3,600 years in the future. So when the black star crosses Earth's orbit path, it's going to cross our orbit path again in November. In between that, there's going to be a perihelion event when the sun turns dark. See, we don't see the sun turn dark. Paul doesn't say the sun's going to turn dark because we're taken when the black star crosses Earth's orbit path on the way into the solar system. On the When it crosses Earth's orbit path, it's still 93 million miles away from the sun at that point. It's going to reach perihelion near Venus' orbit path. But at the end of the age, Christ says, and you're looking at these prophecies up here about the day, of, about what happens. Matthew 24, start at 29, the sun is turned black. It's turned dark. In Revelation 6:12, black is sackcloth. The moon doesn't give forth its light. Okay, that happens when the black star reaches perihelion, when it's nearest the sun. But then, time goes, a little bit of time goes by, month two months and then the black star moves away from the sun and then it lights up again and there's the sign of the son of man in the sky because there's something that you can see when this in between here when, when the sun turns dark there's a brief period when you can see the black star but when the sun reignites you can't see it anymore so that's called the sign of the son of man okay in the scriptures Okay, so Revelation from start to finish shows considerable time passing from the time of our mystery church is caught up with the last trumpet sounding off behind John in Revelation 1.10. Most people never see that trumpet. Revelation 1.10, it sounds off behind John. Same trumpet, 1 Thessalonians 4.16, 1 Corinthians chapter 51, verse 52. The final trumpet. That's the final one closing this 2,000 year mystery time that the prophets never saw. Only Paul can write about that. None of the other prophets see it. 
It's sounding off behind John deliberately because he's standing inside the Lord's day. He's already inside the day of the Lord. So the last event that happened was our trumpet sounding. And we were being caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Holy Spirit goes back down to the earth. Elijah lands on Elijah. Elijah has his powers. And then he's able to preach the gospel of the kingdom and restore all things during the day of the Lord. So John sees those events right at the start and then moving forward during the day of the Lord. We are in the Lamb already through the whole book of Revelation. Every time you see a mention of the Lamb, that's you. You're in the Lamb already. That's what being baptized into Christ means. Okay, so the trumpet sounds off behind John to the final judgment and earth passing away. Read about it right there, Revelation 21.1. Now pay careful attention to Peter's statements that follow. Since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, what sort of people ought you be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of because of which the heavens will be destroyed by burning and the elements will melt with intense heat. But according to his promise, we are looking for a new heaven and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. So the great and terrible day of the Lord is whenever the, the uh, old heaven and earth are done away. You see? So you see how that can be called the day of the Lord? Because even in Revelation, you're going to see the Almighty described as the Lord God. But then you have the Lamb who is the Lord and the Word of God. So these different names and labels are being applied in different ways so that the sons of God can make the connections and the sons of disobedience see something totally different. So the same, we'll see, the work that God does in his word to conceal the truth for his sons, that affects the members of Christ's body. Because the members of Christ's body, even with the new nature in you, with the Holy Spirit in your body, then you can be subject to the deluding influence. Revelation, I'm sorry, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, start at 7. That mystery of iniquity, it affects everything in this planet. Members of Christ's body, when they're out of fellowship, they're, they're twisting scripture to mean something else. That deluding influence can make them believe what is false. So that they're judged, it's not the same judgment as those that are being judged for sin. It's the judgment when you're standing at the judgment seat of Christ and you have things turned around backwards. You ended up, your rewards are going to suffer whenever you are, you have things interpreted badly. And when you're dispensing grace doctrine, that is not grace doctrine, it's something else. That gets you in trouble. That turns, turns your uh, white garment into soot. And it turns your the shiny stones into, well, they're not so shiny, they look more like lumps of coal. That's not what, that's not what you want. Do you see me agonizing over getting everything just right for a reason? That's what you do when you're looking for the heavenly rewards that are the finest and the purest. And the edges of every stone is clean cut. So the light glistens, shines up and down on it like a, the edge of a razor blade, kind of like the edge of a knife. That's what you're shooting for in heaven. You don't want to do things in a sloppy way. And you want to be right. Whenever you're... you're uh, Offering a rebuttal to a brother in Christ, you're writing a, um, a counter argument to what he's presented, you better be right. Because if he's right and you're wrong, God, guess what God's going to do? At the judgment, the judgment seat of Christ, he's going to take stones out of your chest plate and give it to your brother. Who tried to open your eyes, you wouldn't listen. It's a benefit of doing these Bible debates when you're right. And because you're trying to help your brethren, many times you're arguing with those blinded by denominationalism. They're members of the Antichrist body. They're never going to see it. They're being they're they're grabbed by the nose by that deluding influence and they're not going to let go. Because if they're deluded by God, notice who sends that deluding influence. God sends it. It even says in the verse, God sends deluding if God sends a deluding influence on you, you're done. Nobody can save you. Nobody can turn your things around. Okay, so the day of the Lord, in short, there's a day of the Lord, Jesus Christ, and a day of God. 
that ends the day of the Lord. Being characterized as the day of the Lord in the same way the Almighty is called the Lord God. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God. Now, if you go back to Genesis 2 and you're looking at the Lord God, that's Christ. God has been working, the Almighty has been working in Genesis 1. He sat down and rest in his Son. Whenever you realize he's sitting in his Son, it makes everything else make sense. That's how he was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. 2 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21. Okay? Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, the Almighty. Every reference to the Almighty in the Bible, talking about the big H, A here, is a reference to the Almighty. That's God, Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. That's God, John 1.1. 1, 1. Okay? Who was, who is, and who is to come. I've got the witnesses labeled for you right here. All right? Once you see God who was as a water witness, you realize God who was is a lot like the Holy Spirit, water witness servant of the Father and the Son, a lot like Eve, servant of the seed in Adam. And God who is to come, you remember, this is a phrase that Christ used of Elijah, he who is to come, Matthew chapter 11, verse 14. If you can accept it, Elijah, who is to come, even though many people are going to put that in the in the uh, the Aorus tense is in, is translated almost every time in all of these Bibles as past tense because there is no equivalent. It's a, uh, a, a the Aorus tense. It is uh, the tense of perpetuity. Things that go on forever. He was to come. Okay. Three different kinds. We don't really need to get in that today. Um, you will see translators that say heavens and earth regarding the destruction of the new heaven and the new earth, Revelation 21, in the same way you see mistranslations in Genesis 1.1. How many Bibles? Even the New American Standard says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. That heaven is heaven is singular, just like the word is singular. Three singularities there. So whenever you know what it really says and you, you understand the Hebrew and you understand the witnesses, it just makes you kind of chuckle a little bit. It's like it, it would say in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earths. Oh, one creation and one word, which is my father art in heaven got his name from the heaven of Genesis 1.1. So you see translations that say that. And so you're going to see that happen here when they talk about new heavens and new earth. It's new heaven and earth. The earth has its heavens, heaven and earth. Just like the new heaven has its father, son and Holy Spirit. And that's a realm. Christ Jesus is a realm. Spirit, blood, and water. Until the time when it becomes the word again. The sun is going to continue to enlarge. Every time God remakes. Probably should be pulling your diagrams up here. Every time God remakes. The, um, I think I will pull it up for you. Here you go. And then getting God. In the end. God is all in all. In between here. You have God to come, God who is, and God who was. You just saw him. Spirit, blood, and water. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Spirit, blood, and water. Heavens, heaven, and earth. Spirit, blood, and water. The thing is, the, the kingdom of heaven here, between the heavens and the earth, the only begotten Son, between the Father and Holy Spirit, God who is, they're all going to continue to enlarge. Until this this right here becomes the earth. This here becomes heaven, the word. And this becomes God of Genesis 1-1. The beginning and the end are going to be the exact same thing. The first and the last. The last is first. So the son testifies for the original singularity. Who's the word? The son walking around on the earth is the father, son, and the Holy Spirit walking around. That's why he says the father and I are one. You can also say I and the Holy Spirit are one. You see the circle? They're one. These are one. The Son has features and characteristics of both, the Father and the Holy Spirit. The Father gives the Son the authority to judge. Why? Because the, the time's coming when the Father will not exist anymore. The Holy Spirit won't exist anymore. There's only going to be the Son. He's testifying for the Word. All of these realms here are decreasing until these become what they were in Genesis 1-1. 
It's the way that it works. That's the end of the mystery process that we're talking about here. This is where you saw what I just showed you. Okay, so there are translations that are going to have the extra S on the heavens. Just don't let it bother you. Some of them have it right, a few of them. But then they'll have that right and other things wrong. There's no such thing as a perfect trans English translation. The key for understanding the differences between the day of the Lord, Jesus Christ restoring all things, and the great and terrible day of the Lord, almighty day of God, is the first describes the restoration of all things, the time and epochs. The restoration of the kingdom to Israel, the restored temple, David restored on the throne, etc. That takes a long time. The day of God is great and terrible event that comes once the devil, beast, and false prophet have their short time near the end of the age and after the great tribulation, leaving only the devil's disobedient children on this planet. The day of God is the final event of this evil age so God can create the new heaven and new earth in the flash of a moment to begin the coming new age once Satan is burn, burning to the ages of the ages in the lake of fire with death and Hades. The thing to realize, Satan. Satan is a singularity like Adam in the infinite realm when God made him as a god. Satan's three witnesses, Satan has three witnesses here just like the Word does. The Word has three witnesses, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Satan has three witnesses here too. The devil, or you can be characterized as the dragon, He's characterized in this world as the devil. In the heaven world, where he's fighting Michael the Archangel, he's the dragon. Okay, same, but they're, they're incarnations. That's what they are. When he was thrown down, the dragon's head's cut off. Hasn't hit the ground yet. We're, that, that entire realm is frozen, motionless from our perspective. It's moving in super slow motion. Like the infinite realm isn't moving at all. It's frozen, motionless, and it will be to the end of the ages. Heaven is the one that's going to change because heaven and earth is one being recreated for each new age. The infinite realm is not being recreated. That's the only realm that's real. We're, we have stepped outside of the infinite realm for heaven and earth events to take place over and over and over again. Ecclesiastes 1, start at 9. In order to reproduce what happened between infinite realm hosts. That's the thing to realize here. Okay. So... I hope that you can understand the difference between the day of the Lord and the day of God and that Paul describes how the day of the Lord begins and Peter is describing how the day of the Lord ends and then leads up to the event that is the day of God or the great and terrible day of the Lord. Then In the uh, mystery reports, the Naji is the one that I read before. hope I'm saying your name right. And Marina, new uh, subscribers. So now there are is it 29 subscribers it's going up every week and uh, very very good the um and gary and brian and naji donated at the website appreciate you guys support very very much going through a really hard time right now and you, you guys help i mean it's a real blessing from god I look forward to standing you up before god and christ at the judgment seat and doing you guys the same way and helping you. So I really, really, really appreciate it. So this is, um, since this is the mystery reports in its infancy, then a lot of these are remaining the same. So it was written on January the 6th. How do we join? Because people write me at the website, terrell03.com, and they ask me these same questions. So really good question that you asked there, Sean. And so how do we join the activities? You get your answers right here. You should go to the website. You scroll down here because other people are, are becoming um, confused about what's going on for some reason because everything's right here and if you want to understand so that's a link that's a video link look at the bottom left see it? YouTube that's a video link describing black star newsletter survival group programs here you go then this down here is the mystery report newsletter tutor chat programs okay now, if you, you want information, that's a different video, different program. So what's happening is Mystery Report subscribers are, at, are, are trying to write for threat assessment. And Survival Group subscribers are writing wanting to know how you join chat. 
chat is only for mystery report. It happens Tuesday night. That's tonight. Now, if you're a mystery, if you're a survival group uh, Christian and you want to subscribe to this program, you're invited. This here's the premium button, just like the survival group. Fifty dollars per year. It's just one payment per year. Four bucks a month to be uh, a full supporter. And then you send me your questions, just like Brian. And then I'm your tutor. I'm your guy right here. You write me, your emails pop right to the top. They're going to be answered. My apologies to Najee because you wrote me. I mean, I'm not kidding you. I was had all these windows pulled up, and I was getting ready to start making this report, and your question came in. So we'll I'll look at that again, and it could be that Najee is going to be the featured article for next week. I'll spend an hour explaining you know, exactly everything. So if you want to contact me, contact me right here. If you're a subscriber, you're writing me at a different email address, totally different. So just remember, I get real busy. I get here as time permits. Your email might be there for three days or four days. My apologies, but Naji, subscriber, her email has already been read, even though I didn't have time to answer it. Brian's, every time yours pop up, I'm going to, I'm running to support people that support me. If you do, if you you, you, oh, you start programs just like I am. Survival group, newsletters, you're going to do the exact same thing. Same thing, Dutch Sense, Special Observers, everybody. Run to help their supporters. Greatly appreciate it. So that's how it works. And if you want to join us in chat tonight, subscribe right here. I'll keep the window open. And see, if you subscribe to the newsletter only program, you're not going to get the instructions on how to join chat. This is only two bucks a month. But you get all these newsletters. There's going to be 57 of them this year. Like you see, I know that Najee is doing a whole bunch of reading if you're catching up. There's just tons of information. By the time somebody joins in six months, they're going to, be, they're going to have a whole bunch of catching up to do. Okay, So this is the program for the chat. That is tonight, Tuesday, every Tuesday evening, 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Please bring your questions. Write them down. Have them ready. Because then we can go rapid fire. You can ask, ask them. I've heard... Over the decades, just about every question that I can imagine. If you hear a chuckle out of me, it's because I haven't heard it before. That's only, I think in our uh, our chat sessions, that's only happened once. I think David asked me a question that I hadn't heard before. So um, so that's how you do it. I showed you the uh, this website. You need to go here. And uh, the link's in both newsletters for this week. This is the website that I use, Bible Gateway. And I use the New American Standard. Okay. And then this is where I debate. Right here, you see, this is uh, the Three Kingdom Baptisms. Information that I just wrote this morning is in this newsletter. In defending, in the clarifying statements. This is my opening post. Right? And I'm defending it. These other guys come along. They tried. The difference between God and my Father right in heaven, say I posted this. 63 readers, nobody, nobody wants to even write one way, or, one way or another on that one. And then I have another one down here too, uh, right here, The Mystery of Adam. 316 reads, not one person has, has replied yet. Some of this, that's is on the, really on the deep end of the pool. And this is a dispensationalism room. And I deliberately pick dispensationalists, even though I am not one. Because generally... They are more up to date on rightly dividing the scriptures. They know the difference between the Gospels and things. Some of these guys don't. But I'm really looking for a good debate. And uh, just the same way as Brian is, he's looking for a good debate too. And then, uh, oh yeah, this is where I was making a point this morning. See this word? Numphy. Or numpha. Looks like numphy to me. The punctuation is going to be numpha. But anyway. Some people think that we're the bride of Christ. Some people think that we're the bride of Christ, and I'm just tapping you on your head and going, "Wait a minute! If you're gonna, if if Paul is going to call us the bride of Christ, then you're gonna have to show me one place where Paul uses the term because he never uses the term bride. He never uses the word disciple either. Many kingdom terms Paul never uses once in any of his epistles to the Gentiles because he's writing about something else. This is prophecy." Prophecy. Israel is the bride. Hosea 2, start at 19. And that's what John the Baptist says. John 3, 29. He who has the bride is the bridegroom. The bride's Peter, John, and James. Not Paul, Titus, and Barnabas. 
the body of Christ, Paul, Barnabas, and Titus were meeting with the bride, Peter, John, and James, in Acts 15. Most people, they don't even see that part. That there's a water ministry, Peter, John, and James, there's a blood ministry, Paul, Barnabas, and Titus. Two different gospel messages. Gospel of the kingdom versus the gospel of the grace of God. Two different churches, kingdom bride, mystery body. And then... Uh, Enough on that. So that's how the system works. How do you receive the Mystery Report newsletters? The way you're going to receive them is through your Dropbox folder. You're going to have a Dropbox folder link. So Najee, receive the link, and then just plug it. You don't need a Dropbox folder account. You don't need username. You don't need a password. You just need the link. Put the link in your browser. Hit the Enter button. Boom. You're looking at all the newsletters in a folder. That's how the system works. Very efficient. That the, the, this, the newsletter is going to be uploaded whenever the video is processing. All right? So when you see the videos out there, that means you can go download the newsletter, too. And you can read the newsletter as you're watching the video. It was very good stuff. Okay, I'm skipping by here. You know, the clarifying statements. This is probably, well, besides the top feature part, where we're going we're gonna to hit a good topic, answer your questions, then this is where, this is my original post. The OP means opening post, and this is the link, and then this guy right here is writing against me. And then you get to read, he says, well, your, hypo your opening hypothesis is unbiblical. <laughs> Any conclusion drawn on baptisms will be unbiblical as well. There's only one church, which is the body of Christ, which, as Paul said, is comprised of Jew and Gentile. See, he thinks because Jews and Gentiles are in the body of Christ, that obeyed our gospel, that everybody obeying the gospel of the kingdom, well, they just don't exist. And he can't see the three baptisms, the one in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Matthew 28, 9. He can't see them. He only sees the one baptism. So, it's a little bit different. Quoting the entire OP to vote your unsupported opinion is throwing effort after foolishness. You're going to see that I say that quite often. The OP says, and so then... I go back and reiterate, give him another opportunity. Here's links to the two Gospels, the two churches. Okay, here is, here we see two, two previously posted OPs and statements supported by three scriptural passages from Matthew 28, Acts 19 and 20 that nobody posting in this dispensationalism forum has bothered to address. Let's start here. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do you see three baptisms there? I do. The OP demonstrates how number one is John's baptism. And God, in the Word, hey, he shows you people walking around with only two of the baptisms. And then they get the third one. And then he shows you disciples walking around that only have one baptism. And then Paul has to give them the other two. Clearly demonstrated. The OP demonstrates how the number one baptism is John's baptism. Yeah. Mark 1, 1 through 6. Baptizing for the forgiveness of sins. First baptism of the gospel of the kingdom. If you want to try to prove that the baptism, that baptism in the name of the Father, Son, and Son, and Holy Spirit is anything other than the three kingdom baptisms, then go ahead. Make your case using scripture. Good luck because God's word shows us the difference in Acts 8, 12 through 17, and Acts 19, 1 through 6. For some, some reason, the website, because I, I cut and pasted this from the website after I posted it, and usually the website fills it in like it did here. See Christian forums? Anyway, some of these I actually put in myself. I said Bible Gateway, I put all those in. Okay, do you need more proof, or am I the only member debating the four baptisms topic? Alrighty then. I said, it happened. So this is from Acts 19. You can see it here very clearly. So it happened. While Paulus was in Corinth, Paul passed through the upper country and came to Ephesus. And he found some disciples. Those are already disciples. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And he said to them, no. And you notice that Paul had to ask them. You couldn't tell by just looking at them. And they said, no, we have not heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said, into what you were baptized? And they said, into John's baptism. That's number one right there. 
name of the Father, baptism. They got the first one, forgiveness of sins. That's why they're called disciples. Paul said, John baptized with a baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in him who was coming after him, that is, in Jesus. And then, boom, the Son, from Matthew 28, 19. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, baptism number two. That's exactly what it says. I'm not making this stuff up. They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. He didn't take them to dunk them in water again. They already had that baptism. They, they already had the baptism of John. When they heard this, that's all it takes for the gospel of the kingdom, but we don't preach that today. I'm not saying that there are two ways to be saved today. Only through the word of the cross. Only through Paul's gospel. Gospel to the uncircumcised. Gospel of the grace of God. Whatever you want to call it. That's the only way to be saved today. But this is what was happening 25 years after God raised Christ from the dead. After Pentecost. This is in Acts 19, 25 years later. Disciples walking around without the baptism of, in the name of Jesus and without the, they didn't have any uh, sign gifts. They didn't have any tongues or raising the dead or any of that stuff because they didn't have the baptisms yet. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, a work by a human being, the Holy Spirit came on them, baptism number three, and they began speaking in tongues of prophesying. Right? Paul could see the signs then. But this is how quick it happened for them. They just didn't know the way into the holy place, the holy of holies, through the second baptism of the Holy of the Son and the third baptism of the Holy Spirit, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Exactly what it says in Matthew 28:19. Now, th now th this is uh, so. Th then, whenever I don't do this when they, somebody answers me the first time, but whenever they come back and back and they just can't see it and they they they're just ignoring the truth and saying something else. They're blinded by a deluding influence. They can't help it. But I'm trying to help the reader, the ones that are following. Now, are we going to pretend that we do not speak in English? We do not speak English. Or can we agree that these disciples had only the baptism of John without having the baptism of the Son and the Holy Spirit? At the tops of, of Acts 19. The, these, I should be, say disciples there, say I made a boo-boo. These disciples had no idea about the baptism of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Paul helped them obtain the baptism, number two, and laid hands on them for baptism, number three, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Exactly as it says. You know, debating everyone here at CF.com is easy when the scriptures agree 100% with what is presented in my OPs. And I give them a smiley face. The bottom line here is that the, there are three distinct baptisms, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for the gospel of the kingdom, and just one for us. Our baptism is totally different than all those. Our baptism, our one baptism, is done by the one Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, start at 12. It's done by the one Spirit. So here comes the preacher. He's got the Holy Spirit in, in him. God sent him to you. He's preaching the gospel. He says, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died for our sins. And God raised him from the dead on the third day. That our forgiveness is through his shed blood. Our redemption is in him. Whenever you believe that message right there, then the Holy Spirit that's in me gives you the faith of Jesus and it's with that faith of Jesus that you believe. Before you have the faith of Jesus, before the preacher came, you could not have it. That's what Romans chapter 10 is all about, sort of 14. God's got to send the preacher. Because the preacher has the Holy Spirit in him. The, that Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of promise, is what you are baptized into, Ephesians 1, start at 13. You have to hear the message of truth. I already just told you the gospel. Right there, our redemption's in Christ. Our forgiveness is through his shed blood. God's raised him from the dead on the third day. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, start at 1. It's going to say exactly what I just told you. That's the gospel. You don't add water baptism. You don't add circumcision. You don't add sinner's prayer. You don't add anything. I preach you the gospel. You, you believe it. Then you're baptized into Christ on the cross at Calvary 2,000 years ago. All this happens in the flash of an instant. You go into the earth with Christ. You're with him there three days. You're raised from the dead. You walk around with him until Pentecost. And then you are raised and seated. You're raised above all the heavens. And you're seated with him 
in Christ Jesus, in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 2, start at 4. When you get to 7, you're going to see it. 6 and 7. That's our one baptism. Totally different than the three baptisms of the gospel of the kingdom. So there are four baptisms in the New Testament. Okay, so uh, Noli Dad. Now the OP demonstrates, so he, now he's going to come back and try to answer me. And if you're going to try to do this, I know maybe Brian's seen this before. You're not going to answer. See what I wrote him? You're not going to come back and answer me with three sentences. Three, well, if you want to call these paragraphs, you want to call them paragraphs, go, go for it. But they're not. It's three or four sentences separated that have no support anywhere. This is what he says. What you do not realize is that I realize, this kind of reminds me of, uh, what's the name of that movie? Uh, what you don't realize, <laughs> oh, Galaxy Quest. Whenever they're arguing back and forth, it makes me laugh. Sigourney Weaver's in it. I like Sigourney Weaver. And uh, what you don't realize is that my ship is is, is pulling mines. <laughs> what you don't realize, that I realize that Jesus came to abolish the kingdom prophecy to Israel. I'm just shaking my head. Once Israel rejected the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom was no longer preached, nor heralded. Once Pentecost came, all who were and got saved joined the one body, the body of Christ, which is the one true church composed of Jew and Gentile, inspired by God in Ephesians. So he doesn't even see the gospel of the kingdom. He doesn't see the three kingdom baptisms. He doesn't see the kingdom bride. And this is what he says. There are not two brides, but one, the bride of Christ, which is the church. I'm just shaking my head again. That is composed of all believers from Pentecost until the rapture. I'm just shaking my head here. Peter, John, and James. So the two churches that met, Paul had to go and submit the gospel that he preached among the Gentiles. Quoting there, Galatians 2, start at 1. He received his gospel from a revelation of Jesus Christ, Galatians 1, start at 11. He went and submitted his gospel to Peter, John, and James, those of... of uh, has, he, has he used the word? Those of reputation. Peter, John, and James. That's who he went to submit him to. And yet, Noladad here is going to put Paul's gospel in Peter's mouth in Acts 2. Whenever he preaches, repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. The same thing that John the Baptist preached in Mark 1.4. No, sir. He doesn't see the difference. And he's being lazy. You'll never see in a reply like that from me. So... I go, no, and this was just written this morning. Thank you for writing, the four about, and, but, but please forgive, but typing out a few sentences of unsupported opinion is throwing effort after folly. Well, since I just wrote foolishness, I hey, put the folly in there. What we, what we realize is evidence of nothing regarding, oh, what we realize, that's what he kept saying. You realize, I realize, what we realize is evidence of nothing regarding the correct interpretation of God's word. He says, what you don't realize, I'm not going to quote it again, I go right. And if memory serves, your claim is that the gospel of the kingdom is not preached beyond Matthew 12. That's what he keeps spreading on this website. Which is simply ridiculous. Um, let's actually quote God's word and allow these readers to decide if the gospel of the kingdom is no longer heralded in the four gospels as you claim. The great part is that these readers will see the gospel of the kingdom is preached by Philip in Acts 8. It's not only that they will get that, but they will also see the three baptisms. And this is what I was just quoting to you. This is what we just did before. This is Acts 2. Now I showed you Acts 19, didn't I? Okay, but when they believe Philip, the good news about the kingdom of God, what does this say? The good news about the kingdom of God. That's the gospel of the kingdom. Right here. It's just not the same phrase. The name of Jesus Christ, but they, when they believe Philip, preaching the good news in the name of Jesus Christ, they were being baptized. That's Christ's great, uh, great commission commands from Mark 16, 15, 16. Those who have believed and have been baptized. See, there ain't no baptism with our gospel. This is the gospel of the kingdom. They were being baptized, men and women alike. So even Simon himself believed. And after being baptized, John's baptism, in the name of Jesus, he continued on with Philip. And as he observed signs of great wonders taking place, he was constantly amazed. 
Now, when the apostles in Jerusalem, Peter, John, and James, it's actually just Peter and John here, heard that Samaria had received the word of God. What's Samaria? The land of half-Jews. People that left Judaism, married a Gentile, so on and so forth. Okay, when um, heard that Samaria had received the word of God, which is the gospel of the kingdom, they sent them, Peter and John, who came down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For he, the Holy Spirit, baptism number three, had not yet fallen on any of them. They had simply been baptized in water. Baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, which is baptism number two. These people were walking around in Samaria. They had the first baptism, John's baptism. They had the second baptism in the name of Jesus. That's why the word simply appears in there. Because they didn't have the third one yet. So, Peter and John go down. They know they have the first two. They ain't got the third one yet. Then they began laying hands on them and they were receiving the Holy Spirit, number three. Clearly, perfect examples of the three baptisms. Perfect examples that people can walk around with the first one and not the last two. Or the first two and not the last one. They only become a member of the way Capital T, like I said earlier, capital W, it's mentioned throughout Acts, members of the way, whenever they have the third baptism. The way is the way through the tabernacle or the temple. Characterize it either way. That's what the way means. Because you get the three baptisms, you get to go to the court and then to the holy place and then the holy of holies of the temple. That's the layout of this three kingdom baptism. That's the format that it works under. They're, they're, and then the next thing to realize is that the gospel of the kingdom was a gospel in transition. From the time John the Baptist preached it in Mark 1.4, there was no baptism of the Holy Spirit. There was no baptism in the name of the Son either. There was only the baptism of John. That's all there was. The Son had to come and be recognized. That's what John says. Read the gospel of John. He says, I didn't recognize him. Of course he recognized him. It was his cousin. But he didn't recognize him as the Messiah. He didn't recognize him as the Son of God. But after that, he says, the Holy Spirit told me, when, this, when I, I'm going to go preach the baptism of repentance. But when you see the Holy Spirit landing on someone and staying on that person, that's the one who baptizes the Holy Spirit in fire. Well, when it did it to his cousin, then he knew. So at the very first, he didn't recognize him as the, the one, the coming one. The anointed one, however you want to characterize Christ coming, didn't recognize him. And he's John the Baptist. He's the one sent to clear the way, and he didn't recognize him. Nobody else could either. But then once he came, then he was able to tell them, ah, the name of the Lord Jesus, right? This is, this is the transition that takes place. John didn't have time to run around and do that. He got herded up. If you read Mark 1, it looks like it's instantaneous. He's shipped off to prison. He decreases, Christ increases. Christ took the Holy Spirit from him in the Jordan River, Matthew 3. Then he increased, John, prison, gone. Head cut off. That's uh, Matthew 14. So, perfect examples. I don't think I need to belabor this for you guys. Then I go through and explain to him again, like I just did before. I explain it to him again. It's done in the opening post, it's done in the middle, and it's done this for the third time. Now, I'm not going to do it again on this thread. And um, now, for those actually following the verses, then I'm going to go through and show the first one, the second one, and the third one again. And then, this is the bottom line. Paul describes both of the Gospels right here in this one. These three verses of this one passage. He says, But I do not consider myself, my life, of any account as dear to myself. So I may finish my course and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify solemnly of the gospel of the grace of God. There's the OP right there. Now, and now, behold, I know that all of you, among whom I went about preaching the kingdom, uh, preaching the kingdom, gospel of the kingdom, he just did that in Acts 19. They're no longer going to see my face. Therefore, I testify to you this day that I am innocent, of the blood of all men, and I put me too there. For I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole purpose of God, which includes a bride that he came for first, 
that's now held in abeyance. Read Romans 11, start at 7, it's going to say that those that were called, those that were chosen, obtained it. Peter, John, and James obtained eternal life through water baptism. Water is not as thick as blood. Water is not as thick as blood. So they're getting the short end of the stick. We are members of Christ's body. Our angel half and our man half is already put back together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now we're incarnate as members of the Lamb, bringing the word to the world. Ambassadors for Christ. Right? Christ is in us, and God's inside of Christ in us, reconciling the world to himself. Once you realize that, the word of God becomes extremely powerful. You realize who you are, what you're doing here. You begin to understand your true identity as an ambassador from heaven. The heaven of Genesis 1-1. You're already there. You have a beginning, a now that's frozen motionless, and an end of glory there, right now. Peter, John, and James don't have that. They're still, their angel half and their man half are still separate. They're still standing on the sea of glass in front of the Lamb. You want to be in Christ Jesus? And you want to do it by works in this realm? You're going to do it by being baptized into the Lamb. Marriage Supper of the Lamb. Revelation 19, start at 5. But, guess what you're going to find when you do that? You're going to find, when you're baptized in the Lamb, you're going to, first thing you do is look around, and you're going to realize... That we're already there. We already beat them there by obeying the gospel. That's when Israel becomes jealous. Is whenever they finally get into the Lamb and they look around, they realize that we're mature. We have great rewards. They have little teeny rings on their fingers, little bitty crowns, no staff among them. But we've got all that stuff. They're going to look at us. So what ends up happening is there's no male or female in heaven, right? You know that from reading Galatians. No male or female, no Jew or Gentile or anything like that. But members of Christ's body are going to be like the male, like lions. The members of the bride that join us later, they're going to be like the ladies. They're going to be more feminine. We're going to be mighty and you know, like men on the earth. The bride of Christ is going to be more like the ladies. You're going to see why they're called the bride. And it's almost it's going to be like a male and a female uh, halves. If you will, kind of like in the Senate with the GOP and the and the Democrats, kind of like that. All right. So then he's going to say that um, everybody joined that uh, after Pentecost came, and God's word provides multiple counts. Preaching the kingdom, he see he's he's accepted Scripture in a certain way, and there's no way that anybody can change his mind because he's enslaved by the mystery. Of iniquity, the deluding influence, forcing him to believe what is false. I said, I challenge you to quote a single verse where Paul makes reference to his body church or the body of Christ as the bride. Good luck, because Paul never uses the term numpy. Never use it. That's the reason I had that window popped up, because it was just written right here. Then in the Christian debate section, I'm going to even hurry a little bit more. Gospel of God, 7 by 12. And the Gospel of John does not proclaim that Jesus is God. It proclaims that he's the Son of God. So, first you're going to get his link, and you're going to let... I'm going to, hey, let him put all his stuff out there. I'm not going to interrupt it. Chop it apart. There it is. But now I am. And I say, no. <laughs> Scripture John and John the Baptist clearly say that he's the Son of God. I myself have seen and, my, and have testified that this is the Son of God. Well, he's either the son of God or John the Baptist, and Scripture is a liar. Christ says that he's the son of God himself, John 10, verse 36. Okay. Um, he's actually calling Israel gods. He says, why are you throwing rocks at me and hating on me when you're gods? David says you're gods. Psalms 82, 6, you're gods because you are members of the infinite realm. Over here. And he says, I'm only the Son of God. Because heaven here is a mere incarnation. The Lamb of God that's in heaven here is an incarnation of an incarnation of an incarnation. Because God and His Word in the infinite realm, they're there right now. God and His Word are one right now. God's Word doesn't need any fixing. Heaven is an incarnation. God said to His Word, go over there and make Adam inside yourself again. So that created heaven and time and space. See this in here, time and space? 
and this was created inside of him infinite universe I've shown you guys the diagram before it's like an infinite shell of an egg the white of the egg is heaven the yolk of the egg the boiled egg that's the earth right inside okay so so I break things down from you know as simply as I can it's difficult to show people using just words about what the truth is of scripture it needs to be laid out in terms and using color-coded diagrams it's the only way that I've been able to do it in all these years and decades God's a spirit witness John 4 24 God is spirit heaven is the word is the blood witness and creation and all things is the water witness the same three witnesses from the first three verses from John so I lay everything out start things simple in the beginning was the word which is heaven and the word was with God see and the word was God because here he is God right now but there's no such thing as time and space here time and space only exist in this realm right here so from the perspective of the truth and God and his word then the way that we would look at it from this perspective is in the past tense God was the word was God okay and he's in the beginning with God heaven and earth and then the earth is created so and the word was with God and the word was God there he is God even right now he was in the beginning with God just like this all things earth came into being through him and apart from him nothing came into being that has come into being everything in this earth is made through God's Word and it's even inside of him it's in him that all things hold together Colossians 1 so I try to lay out the witnesses God members of his body God has members of his body each of them are infinite heaven Christ's body every host is almost infinite earth Adam's body every member is finite so in Revelation when you're reading stand with John over here this is what he sees the lamb in the center of the throne the face of the man and the three living creatures this is the three witnesses of the Almighty God who is God who was and God who is to come the face of man that's Christ that's in the almost infinite realm the center of the throne Christ is already there the face of the man you look right beside the throne of God and you're gonna see Christ he's right there at the right hand of God right now the face of a man whose face is, is the face of the man Jesus Christ okay but he has to look because the lamb is an incarnation of Jesus Christ and this can get quite complicated because God and his word are the same over here God's word is there right now heaven is an incarnation of God's word well the lamb is an incarnation of the Father Son and the Holy Spirit Christ Jesus incarnate in this realm is the lamb he takes away the sins of the world the lamb here is the Lord God of Genesis 2 that made Adam in the garden and it was this was a heaven thing until he was cast down into the earth okay so whenever you're baptized into Christ you're baptized way over here into this realm heaven realm but the thing is you have to you have to get from here to here in the diagrams and in the book this is but page 17 this is page 320 of 500 depending on the, the version that you get it's 555 pages something like that so I try to break it down the best that I can and um, looking at the time over here I don't want this to run to two hours this, these are the types of replies you're gonna get from me you're not gonna get three sentences with nothing supported that would man standing in front of Christ standing in front of God all those mighty angels here's your reward for three lame sin no. it's like Pelosi and her two lame articles no that's if I'm doing that <laughs> then I'm calling everybody as a witness the house that's have the power hey bring everybody have them talk no they wanted 18 witnesses you hear about 17 witnesses there's not 17 witnesses there's 18 witnesses that eighth one is the most important one that shift never wants you to hear about okay so this is where Brian writes who are the Saints from Re Revelation 20 verse 9 
So he says, uh, Revelation, he says, one more today. And uh, Revelation 29. And they did go up over the breadth of the land and did surround the camp of the saints and the beloved city. And there came down fire from uh, the, down fire from God out of heaven. That's the same thing Elijah would do. And devoured them. And my understanding through your teaching is that all the saints were martyred at this point. Did St. Minions surround an empty camp? Because that's what Christ says in Matthew 24, 19. He says, they will kill you. And then the end will come. The last one that obeys the gospel of the kingdom, this late range bride, they're going to be right over here with Peter, John, and James on the Sea of Glass. When the last one's done, then the end can come. Not until then. Okay, so who are these saints? Really good question. Okay, so here's my answer. Starting here, using this diagram. You can see the late range bride, I just pointed to it, joining Peter, John, and James, early reigns. However, the missing link and the answer to your question is found here. No, I didn't indent this. And I saw another angel flying in mid-heaven, having an eternal gospel, to preach to those who live on the earth, to every nation, every tongue, every tribe, every tongue, every people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. That's at the end of the age. Worship him who made heaven and earth and sea and springs of water. So while the gospel of the kingdom gathered, gathered kingdom disciples to become a kingdom of priests as a body of intercessors before the Lamb's throne, that's these guys. Okay. Our gospel of the grace of God gathers members to the Lamb's body. We judge the world and the angels. We're members of the Lamb's body. The saints, holy ones from Revelation 29, represent the elect from Matthew 28, I'm sorry, 24, 29 through 31. But immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give forth its light. The stars will fall from the sky. Because the black stars here, again, it's coming now. It's coming at the end of the age. The thing is, they're going to have a November crossing event and we have a May one. So this, what happens here, only happens at perihelion. Okay will be shaken. The black star will rise. And then the sign of the Son of Man will appear. That's what I was telling you about. The, the black star will become visible. That's going to be seen by the world while the sun is dark. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. So we don't get to see it dark because we're taken before the black star reaches perihelion. It's still crossing Earth orbit path in the May side of the solar system. Okay? And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. And they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory he will send forth his angels who are the holy ones that's us and the bride if you read the revelation i mean if you read revelation 19 you'll see these armies in fine linen that describes those in fine linen that went through the marriage supper of the lamb with a great trumpet and they will gather his elect that's the saints from revelation 29 from all the four winds from the one into the sky to the other so by the time of Revelation 29, pardon me, which is the end of the age, only the saints, the holy ones on the planet will be called and saved by God using the eternal gospel. Representing sentences of heaven, not as members of Christ's body and not as members of Peter's kingdom bride. They are, there are three gospels in the New Testament and the eternal gospel is the final one used by God to call holy ones saints in this evil age. So that's how people go to heaven. Just go to heaven. There's other people going to heaven. Start at Romans start at Romans 2. Just start reading. And there you'll see groups of people there that are going to heaven. They're not members of Christ's body. They're not members of the kingdom bride either. But they're being justified by works. People justified by works can go to heaven. They can't be members of Christ's body and go to heaven though. But if you're just going to heaven, that's a way scale thing. More good works, go to heaven. More bad works, go the other way. But that's not what the Gospels are about. The Gospel of the Grace of God gathers members of Christ's body. The Gospel of the Grace of God, or the Gospel of the Kingdom, intercessors, priests. They make intercession. We judge the world and the angels. They make intercession. So 
the citizens of heaven do not actually talk to us. They give their case to the priest. The priest then comes up. They stand there representing them like a lawyer in court. And they say, look, this and this and this. And then we judge the world and we judge their angel half. That's why Paul writes, 1 Thess 1 Corinthians chapter 6, start at 2, that we judge the world and the angels. Okay, then 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 7, these are the most difficult to get through. The reason is because, like I said earlier, Paul met with these Thessalonians face to face, and he just told them. Got them, set them all down together and say, this is how it's going to happen, boom. So then he, whenever they're writing, when he's writing them letter, he says, you, you don't have any need to be anything anybody to explain to you what happens at the end of the age the time and epochs the day of the Lord don't have anything number one you're not going to be here when it's you're going to be raptured right so you're going to see all this stuff from heaven plus I already told you everything so, but they were confused because somebody was running around saying that the the rapture had already happened that the day of the Lord already started they thought they got left behind that's what the so that's why Paul has to go around. I request you, brethren, regarding. This is um, this is my practice, too. You send me a message, I'm going to put the whole message out there and not chop it up. Then, quote one verse, one sentence at a time and give you my answer. Okay, I was going to hold off in answering this question tomorrow. And then um, he is uh, struggling with the most, they're probably the most difficult and so you can read this right here. I'm running out of time. Um, okay, the restrainer is the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of prophecy. Every syllable of God's word is written through the body, the water witness of God's word. That is the Holy Spirit. Go back and read all of Ezekiel, Zechariah, Daniel, or whatever it takes to realize that prophecy, that pro that prophecy A, I could have written that better. I should have put it in quotes must come before prophecy B and then prophecy C, so on and so forth. Jesus Christ gives a good end of the age timeline in Matthew 24, right? So you can grow to understand how the spirit of prophecy works by simply reading Christ's words as the Lord God of the Old Testament and the incarnation of the Lamb of God in heaven. Read the chapter hearing Christ's words and create your own list. False Christ come. Verse 5. Then rumors, wars and rumors of wars. Nation against kingdom. Nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, famines, earthquakes. We're seeing that now because the black star is getting closer at the end of the age like it is now. Okay, Now we know, because we're living through this, that when the black star gets even closer, the quakes stop. That's why we had one seven magnitude earthquake in 199 days, the one from November the 14th. Earth, the earth on the inside is growing because the black star is getting closer. It separates the tectonic plates. So yes, Fukushima, boom. 8.8 .8 chili, boom, lots of big quakes. But then, by the time it gets here, people are thinking peace and safety. People are, I'm not kidding you, people are unsubscribing from the survival group program because they're falling back to sleep. What? No earthquakes. Doesn't look like it's, no, doesn't look like it. They're awake and then they're not. And at the same time, new members last week, was it seven people joined? Seven people subscribed and six or five or six people joined this five group program. So they're passing each other. People that are just now waking up and people that have been there for a little while and they just don't see it anymore. And part of it's going to be because of the nature of the beast. The fact that we had all these big earthquakes, well now they're, they're not here. But having one seven magnitude earthquake in just about 200 days is not normal. Okay, so... He gives you a good timeline, and you simply read Wars and Rumors of Wars. The black star creates the same exact birth pangs that Paul describes for us as the black star closes in. What Christ does not say is that the big quakes will suddenly stop. That's what I just shared with you. Uh, many are believing, uh, many are being delivered to tribulation in verse 9 of 24, Matthew 24, like you see reports of beheadings of Christians around the world in these newsletters. There's more of that down here in the newsletter, Signs of the Times. It's not because we're living at the end of the age. It's because at the end of the age, massive beheadings. Massive, 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 massive beheadings. Those that obey those that obey the gospel of the kingdom, they're all beheaded. 
David is cut off. Messiah the Prince, he's beheaded in his own guillotine. Guillotines are the way, that's the fashion in the New Age. I mean, it's not a New Age. I, I just said, it spoke incorrectly. The New Age is Revelation 21.1. They don't need that there. We're talking about during the Day of the Lord. The giant chopping block that falls in the middle of the town square. Whenever something, When somebody goes, everybody knows. That's like the slang. Everybody knows. Because of the way the city is built and the way that the sound funnels through and the way when that thing drops from so high and when it hits, when it, the head's chopped off, then it sends a boom that goes through the city. Everybody knows that somebody was just executed. So the restraint is the Holy Spirit. Okay, you're seeing reports of beheadings and things today. They are the soul witness part. They're parallel, like the soul mirrors the body. Your soul overshadows the body. These events are overshadowing what happens at 3,600 years from now. We're living through the soul equivalent that plays out more dramatically. Um, literal body fulfillment near the end of the age. Then many fall away amid the false prophets, like you see with the TV evangelists. Like uh, that's from verse 10 of Matthew 24. Like Billy Graham, good example. The sinner's prayer is a false gospel. When you, as soon as you say, just do this, just be baptized, just be circumcised and believe the gospel, just say this prayer, just do this, that's the false gospel. They inherit the spirit of iniquity, the, the, the spirit, uh, the deluding influence. They're under the mystery of iniquity. They're baptized in the body of the Antichrist. They can never be taken out. They have as much eternal security in the Antichrist as we have in Christ Jesus. They cannot escape. Okay. Lawlessness increases. Verse 11. It's like you see in California and New York. Felons are being released onto the streets to re recommit crimes over and over again. Illegals are taking uh, illegals are taking over the place and citizens are living in boxes defecating on the sidewalks like you see in San Francisco, in New York. Citizens are living in boxes. Illegals are living 20 and 30 in a house. That's the way that it works now. And illegals are getting free this and free that. Free phones, free this, free that. And Americans, well, they don't qualify for it. You have to go and be born in another country, come here illegally to get to get rights anymore. Okay, lawlessness is, go is, ex is growing everywhere. And the thing that I noticed about this impeachment sham is that the Democrats on their side, it seemed like everybody was from a state that's inundated with illegals. California, New York, and Florida. Inundated with illegals. Every they're on every street corner. Everywhere you go, you can't go to the laundromat without there being 35 families of illegals in there. None of them speak English. They're everywhere. They're surrounding the labor places. You can see them everywhere, and nobody's doing anything to try to enforce the law. They're not even trying. One of the tweets that I put out says, if you imprison the people that are hiring the illegals, the illegals all self-deport because everybody will start getting rid of their illegals. They'll start hiring the guys that live in the freaking boxes on the side of the... And the reason that it shows 3% unemployment, it's much higher than that. It's because those people living in boxes ran out of benefits. When you're out of benefits, you're no longer counted. You're out of the workplace. So then all these things happen. The abomination of desolation, Matthew 24:15. All this is happening because the spirit of prophecy said so. So you can't have prophecy B happen until prophecy A does. That is the restrainer. So the man of sin that's going to stand in the holy place, well, obviously he's got to wait for the temple to be rebuilt. You can't have the Antichrist come and stand in the temple, defile it, stand in the holy place. That's between the two veils. He's not supposed to go there. He's going to defile the temple that, El that Elijah restores. You have to have the restoration of all things before the devil can come at the end time and do this anyway. You see what I mean? So people that think we're living near the end of the age are blinded by denominationalism. The day of the Lord hasn't even started yet. I had this theory about it. Um, don't mind if you destroy it. Brian has been around me long enough to know that he uses this word not lightly. It's like pretty much anything, like I said, countering biblical contradictions. I don't even know if you can get there by the uh, countering biblical con contradictions by Andrew Tong. 
the University of Southern California, 30,000 posts. They call me the thread killer. And that was back in the, uh, before the Mystery Explained was written. That was back in the late, that was back in the early 90s. So I said, no, always remember that Satan is an infinite realm singularity host. You see God in heaven and earth? Right. None of these singularity hosts exist in the finite realms. None of them. Satan exists in God's infinite realm. His head is cut off in the infinite realm, just like the dragon's head is cut off in heaven, Michael the Archangel, and then they're thrown in the lake of fire here. That's how they're cut off here. One, two, three. It takes three, spirit, soul, and body, to get rid of them. That's what's happening right now. And they have to come back in their short time and kill Messiah the Prince, who's a reincarnation of guess who? Adam, again, for the third time so that uh, it can be done. So who do you, whenever he comes back as the two witnesses is whenever he gets over on them. Because the beast kills the two witnesses, Revelation 11, and they lay in the three and a half days, they lay on the ground and nobody's willing to touch them. People in the whole world are scared of them. The world's full of the Satan's people. All right? And those that obey the gospel of the kingdom. I mean the uh, eternal gospel. Those are the only ones that are left. And so when they stand up again after three days, every, and pe people are even getting, it's like Christmas when these people die. The two witnesses, Adam and Eve, it's their father and mother. And they don't even realize it. God's turning the tables on them. And then they stand up, look up into the, in, uh, up into the sky, and then boom. They join us to return with us in glory. Read Colossians 1, start at, uh, Colossians 3, start at 1. You'll see by verse 4, we're returning with the Lord in glory. In great glory, it says. Right? So, it's going to be a great assembly. The bride, the body, the two witnesses, the Son of Man, coming back, boom, at the end of the age. But that can, none of that can happen until Elijah comes back to restore all things. Christ can't come until Elijah comes first. That's what he said. He's coming at the end of the age. Well, the day of the Lord is just starting. That's when Elijah just gets going. Okay. And um, he says, uh, uh, at the end, I say, all good, brother. Almost nobody can see the black star in God's living word. And he does, he's not going to mention the black star. Probably not many people qualify to be heard on the topic. You really have to do years of research on any of these things before you can really stand up and have a voice. And so this is right up my alley. So we're almost two hours and we're just now getting into, uh, you're going to want this link. You want, you're going to want to go here. This is how you're going to keep up with this. Watch these numbers. This is way worse than Mers and SARS already. And this spread. Be watching for independent YouTube videos from people. You have to be careful and screen them because people can make things look the way they're not. But this, I've already seen lots of videos of what appears to be chaos in China. Chaos. Bodies just laying around. Bodies in body bags nobody wants to touch. Bodies around nobody wants to get near. A lot more deaths than are being, I mean, uh, 429. I'm thinking that it's a lot higher than that. And then there's a whole bunch of, this is what's on a lot of people's minds. Probably must have got, I don't know, 50 of these stories sent to me. So this is an assembly of them. This is the one sent in. This guy's going to explain. The um, This guy's real smart. And he's going to go through the basics with you right here, point of infection. And he's going to show you that this line, it's not it's not normal. This is not normal. The way that things are supposed to go. See that extra line that he drew there? There's something going on with this bug. That's different. And this is really interesting. Sent in by AJ, the Red Planet. The Torah, this fellow here, the things he's going to share in this video, that link right there. Go there and check this guy out. The way he's trying to tie everything together. And Isaiah and the earth staggering like a drunkard, things like that. The thing is, the most that Israel is going to see, because this is a guy that's speaking, uh, he's, he's a Hebrew. He cannot see the mystery at all. Zero. Can't see it. He's not going to be able to see how the day of the Lord begins. For him, that still comes like a thief in the night, how it starts. But he sees how the day of the Lord ends. He's going to be talking about this planet that comes to the inner solar system, the same one I'm talking about. But he's going to talk about when it comes 3,600 years from now. That's, that's the big difference that you want to see here. It came in the day of no, days of uh, Moses, days of Noah. It's coming again now for the prophet of Acts 3. 
start at uh, 19 to 26, and it's going to come again at the end of the age. So over half of the U.S. churches are armed with security now. Pretty smart to do. Why? Because of the spirit of iniquity. The things that are happening at the end of the age, I'm we're talking about blood flowing like you've never seen it before. At the end of the age, killing all these gospel of the kingdom people, right? And this is the persecution, the soul part equivalent of what's happening now. Not nearly to the extent that it happens at the end of the age. Um, theologian offer guidance on how Christians should respond to the virus outbreak. Like I said before, you cannot draw conclusions about this thing yet. We don't know enough about this thing yet. No matter how many videos you watch, it hasn't mutated yet. This thing can go left, it can throw you a curveball. Go right, go up, go down. You don't know what's going to happen. I'm afraid of what the possibility is, and I'm not even willing to tell you that because it's going to be interpreted as fear-mongering. But if this thing t transitions into a super strain, which can happen easily, when it goes through Africa, when it goes through the illegals that are here in the United States, it's just a matter of time before, and the gestation period is so long. And they're saying, well, the maximum gestation is two weeks. You don't know that. Somebody could walk around and be a carrier, and they are able to, to spread this to everybody, and they never have a symptom. Till the day they die, they never have a symptom. This is a different kind of bug that we're dealing with here. It doesn't, quote unquote, present itself. And it has so many reservoirs, or like I like to characterize it, carriers, reservoirs, places where it can just sit and hold. Reservoir is a place that holds something, right? Like a reservoir under the magma chamber. I mean, yeah, under the magma chamber of Yellowstone. It's That's a holding tank for what comes out of the uh, center of the earth so you cannot draw your conclusions on this one way or the other you can't say this is this or it is not this we don't know yet so I've studied intensely those uh, topics about the uh, the superbugs soft kill hard kill weapons uh, biological weapons years and years and I know enough to know that we don't know yet definitely we don't know yet whenever we Whenever there's a the I look at the evidence that where we do know, then I will make a special report. Okay, Christians persecuted even after death. China cracks down on religious funerals. And go down to the bottom of the newsletter and show you more and more of the same. So love to have you a subscriber. You can read the whole newsletter. And um, this video report's gonna this link's gonna go right here. And uh, you get everything in a single document, the video link. All my commentary. You get a new radio show each week from 2012, right? This is going to be. This is going to go up to like 37 or 38 of them, all in one place. And if you want, if you're just a newsletter person, you're not in the tutor chat program. You're just a newsletter person. It's only two bucks a month. Fifty. It's less than 50 cents an issue. And as Najee will tell you, this is extremely valuable stuff. It is. It is worth way, way, way more than as advertised over two bucks a month so um, if you subscribe now then you can join us in chat I'll, I'll, like I said I'll keep my inbox open for that email account and if you uh, subscribe today right over here if you subscribe right over here then you will have the instructions on where to go to register for chat the room name the link and everything else so that you can join us 7 to 9. Now, one thing I didn't say yet is that there is, you notice that there's no video for the chat last week. As I thought, nobody was coming. I opened up the chat room just before 7 o'clock Eastern Time. And if I sat there until a quarter after and nobody shows up, then I shut the, the room down. Right? Not going to sit here all night, right? That's the way the system works. And that's there would have been no chat last week because until Dave wrote me. I closed the window thinking PowTalk was closed. But it wasn't. My messenger was still on. So when David wrote, he goes, hey, what's going on? It was 20 after. So I go, well, I, th I thought nobody was coming. So whenever I shut it down, I turned off the recorder. So see this Bible chat? There's none for the 28th. Because they, um, 
a few members started showing up. I think we had like a half a dozen. And then things started getting good. And then near the end, then I realized I forgot to turn the recorder back on. So the recorder will be turned on. The room will be open at 7 o'clock Eastern time. The plan is every Tuesday, unless there's an emergency or something. Okay. And then there's a 15-minute window there. And as long as one person shows up, the room will be open. And if not, then I just figure you guys figure I'm way behind. I'm way tired. You want to give me a night off. Because I mentioned that in last week's video, and I thought that's what you guys were doing. But you were, like, trying to take it easy on me or something. So everything goes the way it should. There's going to be a link right here to tonight's Bible chat. We have some pretty interesting um, um, uh, Bible studies, questions and answers and things. So when you come, please write down your questions ahead of time. And then you can just come and ask them. Seems to be the part of the problem we're having is I'm doing most of the talking and there's not enough, there's not questions. You know, so we were sitting around kind of looking at each other whenever this, that two hour period is whenever you're going to get the most out of me. Just like this video right here, two hours, two hours and 54 right now on my counter. All right. It's going to be kind of like this where you ask the question, I'm going to give you the answer real time. Boom, 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 boom. And that's the way it's going to go. And if I get a question that I haven't heard before and I can't answer before, and I'm, I'll just tell you, I'll say, hey, I haven't heard that one before, but I'll have it for you next week. All right. But that hasn't happened so far. It hasn't happened in a real long time. I'm usually pretty good on all this stuff. Thank you guys again. Get more information right here at the website. Happy to have you as a supporter. We're up to 29 now. Get more information at the website. I'll see you on the next report. Eventually, I'm going to start making more updates on this channel. Things are going kind of slow right now. All the notifications for Black Star sent out, in case you're a Black Star subscriber, that took that took a long time, all almost all month for January. And uh, with so much going on, I just really don't have the time, but I can see the end of the light of the tunnel. You know, look, looks like by the end of February, then I'm finally going to be caught up with everything. This place here will be fixed up like it's supposed to be without looking at plywood and stuff where I'm living right now. You know, plywood floors and stuff like that. Because we had to rip all the carpet out of here because that medical thing that was going on. It looks like that we beat that part, by the way. We've been clean now for a month. And we couldn't say that for the for since December. So we've been fighting this thing. been tired and all that. Doing our best. So appreciate you guys' support very, very much. And I will, uh, if I don't make Pardon me. If, I don't see, if you don't see a special report, pardon me, here during the week, having trouble, then I will, uh, you'll see me next Tuesday making the same report. So, uh, and I will, uh, so until then, I'll see you.